Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. But for a radio audience here in Mississippi, at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com. We're glad that you all could be with us. Also, tuning in through our online affiliates around the world. We're glad you all could be with us as well. You know, sometimes we get so busy in life that we can leave ourselves behind, and we're not doing the things that we not only are, are made possible to do, but also reaching the level of success that is there for us. Our next two guests have written a book that is perfect and so timely. We're excited to welcome best-selling authors Angie Morgan and Courtney Lynch. Their new book is called Bet on You, How to Win with Risk. We're going to talk to them not only about the writing of the book, but also what it's been like for them in their own lives to be able to help others to be able to look at themselves differently and what they can do differently. If you guys are just now hearing about the book, of course we'll let you know how to get your own copy. But thanks so much to the two of you for the time. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much, really Sarah. We're here. happy to be here. Yeah, the pleasure is definitely all mine. And Courtney, I'm going to begin with you. I mean, when you kind of look at this journey for yourself, what has it been like for you to not only be able to, to write and share with others, but also to see how those words and, and the tips you've shared have been able to impact others' lives? You know, that's the main reason I do this work, right? It's just, it's such a joy to be able to add value to others. And through my last 18 years of building my own company and working with so many great leaders, Angie and I have a leadership development company called LeadStar, and we've worked all over the world with companies like Facebook, Google, Walmart. We get to meet amazing leaders who have been extremely successful. And so I feel at times I'm a journalist, right? I get to hear these amazing stories. I get to see best practices in action, and that's why I do what I do, so that I can share this insight with those that take the time to read a book or listen to a great show like yours. Well, I appreciate that. And Angie, I want to ask you a similar question, because one of the things you all do is, I mentioned the book is called Bet on You. You all kind of take us on what you call the Bet on You journey, which shows that this isn't just something we do once in and we stop. What has it been like for you to be able to help individuals and to stay motivated on their own journey? Really great question. One of the things that Courtney and I wanted to do with this book, Bet on You, is to help people grow more comfortable with the concept of taking risks in their life. So as Courtney was talking about through LeadStar, we've got these amazing private one-on-one conversations, and we get to hear about you know, people and their dreams and their goals and their visions for themselves. And these aren't outlandish. These are totally realistic visions that they're just hesitant to take the risk to do. And so we wanted to demystify risk. Like it's not going to the casino and, you know, putting, you know, all the money that you have on red 21 and hoping it comes your way. It's not that. It's it's about incrementally taking steps to live the life that you have self-authored for yourself. And that's what's unique about this stage in our life is that most of our dreams are a product of our perspective and experience. These are ours, not what other people are telling us to do, our own. So we just really wanted to give people a confidence and courage and use that word journey, take them on a path for themselves that leads to fulfillment. I love that. Uh, Courtney, uh, one of the things that Angie mentioned in the course is, you know, when it comes to, you know, not this isn't some crazy, you know, gambling all or nothing thing. You all do talk about being smart. Chapter 6, one of my favorite chapters, Weave Your Safety Net. I love that. Talk to us about what it's been like for you, Courtney, to redefine, even as you talk about in the book, your safety net and how it can help you on this journey. No, 100%, right? We, we, when we're safe as people, we do brave things, right? So to be brave and courageous and bold, we have to have some sense of safety, right? Because we wrote this book for adults. We wrote this book for adults with experience. Angie and I like to talk about real-world leadership. There is no magic wand, right? And for adults, we want to support people in having higher quality dreams. And that means that when you're dreaming, you're really understanding, you know, how do I resource? 
justice? How do I handle the inevitable failures that will come along, right? Whenever we step out to do something new or different or bold, we're going to face missteps. We're going to face failures. And in fact, those can lead to some of the best educational experiences we have. I look at my own life and I think your listeners can understand. I mean, I'll ask the question, where do we learn most of our lessons in those really awesome mountaintop moments of peak success that we experience? Or in sometimes those long valleys where things aren't always great. I mean, I've learned most of my lessons in the longer valleys uh, where things aren't always great, but it's given me a lot of perspective. And so when we talk about a safety net, we talk about the obvious, right, finances. People need to make sure they're in a financial position to take the risk that that they're desiring to take. The challenge is, Angie and I have watched time and time again, people overestimate really needs to look like. And so we want people to know what just enough is and to not sacrifice the present for the future, meaning we only have so many years to earn and to build that financial foundation. And so your future earning potential is really important, and you often need to take things, take steps to invest in yourself. So the second aspect of that safety net is your talent, and I think it's the biggest one. We tend to think an employer or a government agency or a boss, right? Those people are our safety net. They're not. It's our talent. How well are we performing on the job? How well are we adjusting to new expectations? How well are we keeping our skills soft, sharp? That's uh, really, truly what a safety net is when it comes to our talent. And lastly, judgment. We only live one life. We only get so many firsthand experiences. Yet how are we learning from others? I read a lot of biographies. I'm always asking people questions. I bring a lot of curiosity to new relationships because I'm trying to learn from those that have done things very differently than what I've done. And a lot of times the the lessons I learn from others are very relevant to me three minutes in the future, 30 years into the future. I just don't know. But I, I work to improve my judgment by learning well from others. And I think this learning is is definitely something, again, to go to what we were saying earlier, uh, Angie, is something that is a process. I think one of the things you all talk about in the book that to me, and I've seen people do this too, is they forget there are more alphabets than A and B. You all do such a great job in illustrating this (laughs) that, you know, we, we do kind of put ourselves in a situation that if, a and B don't work, we think it's over. What has that been like for you to help people to reexamine that, Angie, and to see that, you know what, sometimes they're, they have to go to C and D or E and F to be able to get to where they want to go? So, to your point and precisely, that we have this binary thinking when it comes to decisions we make. So let's take a step back. What's a risk? A risk is a decision that leads you into uncertainty. That's it. <laughs> and that's something we've always done before. I don't know, you know, um, I know that right now people think about the risks they're contemplating as so much bigger than they actually are. It's really just a decision that's going to lead you into uncertainty. So it's not win or lose. It just sets you on a course. And, yeah, we can't predict the future, but I would gamble on this that some of the things that you thought you were going to do or set out to do and they turned out to be something completely different probably were the most memorable and wonderful things that happened in your life. I was talking to this with a friend the other day. At the beginning of 2021, my husband and I had this vision that we were going to open like a a bar and a hot dog stand. We'd been to Key West, so too many margaritas and seeing people walking around (laughs) with koozies (laughs) And we're like, oh, you could make more money if you sold hot dogs, too. So anyway, but what it ended up to be nine months later is that we bought a cafe and bakery. Better. It was more exciting. It fit our community so much. I live in northern Michigan. I don't live in Key West. It just fits our community better. So where we start and where we end is going to be different. It's not if this, then that. It's like let's start going down a path. Let's see where this takes us. And you can surprise yourself by the result. I love that. And again, that is something all of us can take to heart. I want to say for those who are just tuning in, is on the radio side or online, you're listening to Conversations Live. We're excited to welcome Angie Morgan and Courtney Lynch to our program today. We're talking to them about their newest book that I think is so inspiring and will hopefully move you toward action. It's called Bet on You. How to Win with Risk. We're talking with them about what it's been like for them to use their platforms to be able to impact the lives of others. And impacting the lives of others, and, and I love the fact, too, that's one thing that you all 
have been able to consistently share that this is something that that is so much bigger than just us. And I think, you know, when I was reading this book and thinking about this conversation with the two of you, I thought about how great it is that you all continue to share your own story, share your own journey. In Chapter 3 of the book, Dream It, Own It, Take It, you all say this, Success requires dreams, ownership, initiative, and action. Once you take action, you put yourself in a position to be better for yourself and in turn, stronger for others. So Angie, I want to begin with you and then Courtney, I'll ask you a similar question. Angie, when did you realize that by embracing these these principles, they would not only help you, but also help you to be able to inspire other people as well? Inevitably, when we change, the people around us change. We write a story in the book about a friend of mine. Her name is Katie Bertadato. She went back to college. It was a really risky decision for her. You know, at the time, she had about $12 in her bank account. She was recently divorced. She had two young boys. She knew it was going to be a pretty significant sacrifice, but she persevered. She ended up being the graduation speaker at the University of Michigan's commencement. So where she started to where she ended was amazing and inevitably too the people she has touched along the way her children saw their mom persevere through this really you know difficult time they have more pride they have more you know self-expectation about their lives the community who supported her they were so encouraging and supportive so we think that again that this isn't a risk other people will inevitably be impacted and probably your greatest cheerleaders, and you can inspire people from the choices that you're making along the way. I love that. Courtney, what about for yourself? When did you realize the ripple effect of this by being able to apply these principles and and doing the work yourself, how it could also impact the lives of others? You know, I think it goes all the way back to where Angie and I met, and Angie and I had a pretty unique meeting spot. We were both in the United States Marine Corps, and we met in our very early days of training, and the Marine Corps really opened our eyes to the best way you can have impact is by being of service to other people and really taught us by the numbers service-based leadership. And in that process of honing us and growing us into Marines, right, we were two kind of average girls out there, the girl next door, and we just decided to, to take a risk and make a big choice to join the Marine Corps. And through that training as Marines, they taught us that the stronger we become ourselves, the more now I see it after writing bet on you, right? The more we place bets on ourselves, the more we grow, and then we're stronger for everyone around us in our community and our families and the people that depend on us. And so I think that's been something that I really picked up from my time in uniform. And not only did I feel I was part of something bigger than myself when I was being of service, it was also personally very rewarding. And so I think that's one of the main reasons Angie and I have continued on in the work that we're doing. So many people out there have so many many amazing talents. And so we help people really understand how to get the courage and confidence to take risks and to bet on themselves and then to develop their ability to lead and to lead other people, to influence and inspire. And when you spend an ounce of time in those areas, all those years people have spent building their technical skills or their education or leveraging their great strengths, it just compounds the impact. I, I love that, and I also love the fact that you all, you, you. This book is inspirational, but it also, I think, is practical. And one of the things that you all talk about doing in the book, Angie, is being able to visualize basically what your thing is. And all of our thing is going to be different. Our idea of what success is for us. But you also encourage us in the book, which I love this point. We don't always, you know, get encouraged to do this. Is think about how you're going to deal with the bumps, how you're going to deal with the challenges. Angie, why is that important for us to do? Because as you say in the book, one thing is to not to be paralyzed by that, but think about how you could navigate basically the the rocky terrain that can come. But why is that so important to do as we are visualizing? So we would be giving our readers a complete disservice if we didn't talk about our fears and talk about fails because everyone's afraid of something, even the liars who say they're fearless. Are afraid of something. <laughs> yeah. And everyone and fails. Then, Angie and I know that very well. <laughs> and everybody does fail. But, you know, failure, like we call it learning. And so it's, it's our fun way of saying that, wow, that didn't work out, but we're better from the experience. And so mm-hmm. when, 
We write about it. We want people to know that, you know, you enter into an experience and day one, it's exhilarating. It's exciting. You can pat yourself on the back and saying that I'm going to do it. But you do need to have a plan for what's it going to be like when you feel fear. How are you going to work through that? Who are you going to call? <laughs> you know, Who are you going to reach yeah. out to for support so you can get the mental preparation for handing some of those, you know, valleys that Courtney was talking about? And failure, who are you, going to, you know, what's going to happen when things don't go your way? We talk a lot about visualization visualization in the last chapter um we we talked not just about the power of visualization to help you know you you realize your success but we we share a story about billy jean king and how she always used to think about the other side of the net and what if she got a serve or what if they got a shot in on hers and it didn't go her way how do you shake it off how do you get your head back in the game and you see this too we Courtney and I are kind of sport dorks. But you see this in football as well. Like, you know, you throw an interception. How do you isolate that and just set it aside and keep on going? You are, uh, you know, we write about this in the book as well. You know, there's always going to be challenge in life, no matter what path you take. But think about the challenges that you're going to encounter when you're risking. So, again, we're going to have challenge. But if you're risking for the things that you matter most, you're going to be better poised and prepared to deal with those challenges, but definitely have a plan. Love that. And, Courtney, I mentioned I love the fact that you all do talk about, I know I've definitely learned this along my path, that what is success for me, what is a win for me, may not be seen as a big deal for everybody else. So that's okay. How important is it for us to personalize our success? You know, it's very interesting. I feel like the challenge that speaks to the heart of a person, the heart of a leader, is the challenge that actually will develop that person and will develop that leader. And so it's really important that we embrace what's on our own hearts because it offers that pathway that's going to give us the lessons that we need. And I think uh, – we go through life and there's some kind of very traditional milestones, right? Like someone might go to college or someone might get married, right? These are all things that society celebrates and they're great things. They are also, though, not necessarily as risky because lots of people do them. They're very awesome accomplishments. Yet I think it's those things that are a bit off the beaten path that you don't see everybody else doing but you have on your heart to do. Those are the risks that when you step forward and bet on yourself and and step towards them and grow and develop in the pursuit of, of those things that matter to you, I think that's where your authentic contribution and that's where you can be the difference maker. I think the things that are on our hearts to do are the things that are going to add value in the world. And that's why we're all wired a little differently. And and that's why I think it's best to step through the fear of what makes us different and, and, and live that version of a successful or a happy or a fulfilled life as it fits us because that gives us a chance to contribute in a great way. Love that. Love that. So, Courtney, for those uh, who pick up Bet on You, what do you hope the book does for them as they're going throughout the rest of this year and on their own Bet on You journey in life? Well, what I hope is Bet on You certainly offers them inspiration, right? But reality, grounded in realism. The stories in the book that Angie and I share, a fair bit of them are stories about how we failed and stumbled, and we hope people can relate to them. We also hope they take advantage of the free online tool because there's so much research that when adults organize what matters to them, right, and when they read through the book in every chapter, there's a chance to go online and build their own risk manifesto, something they can download. It's a beautiful PDF when they're done with it. We actually want them to print it kind of old school style and keep it in a desk drawer or in their nightstand or maybe somewhere in their office filing cabinet that no one else will see, or maybe they share it with an accountability partner. It's completely up to them. But we want them to put fingers to keyboard and also push their thinking around what's possible and connect in their heart to what they want to do to to keep stepping to add value to their own lives and the people that count on them. So we hope that on you offers inspiration and then that very practical, hey, we've been through it and we've watched a lot of leaders go through these types of journeys. Here are the best practices and here's what's not only possible for you, but probable for you if you take them into consideration. Great. And, Angie, what about for yourself? What do you hope it does for the reader? I hope that they try something. We put so much negativity around the concept of trying, and I'm going to do this. It's going to be very unpopular, but I'm going to blame Yoda because, you know, do or do not, there is no try. No, when it comes to taking bets on yourself, put yourself out there. Try something. 
just try something. It doesn't have to be perfect. We write about that too in Bet on You. You know, if you're going to perfect anything, perfect your response to imperfection. Just put your toe in the water. See what risk you can attempt for yourself. Certainly put your thought into it because our thoughts influence our beliefs, influence our behaviors. But just do something small because something small can turn something big. Love that. Such a great book. Such a great conversation with the two of you. Really do appreciate the time. Again, everyone, New York Times bestselling authors Angie Morgan and Courtney Lynch have been our guests. The new book is called Bet on You, How to Win with Risk. It's out through our friends at Amazon.com or through your favorite local bookstore if they don't have it. I know they'd be more than happy to be able to order it for you. Angie, how can our audience stay connected with you? Yeah, if you go to leadstar.us, you can sign up for our Monday morning leadership moments. They are spam free, just hopefully little bursts that can get you started off on the right leadership mindset on a Monday morning. All right. Well, thanks to the two of you again for writing this book, and thank you for the time. Really appreciate it. Thank, thank you very you. much. It was great to be a part of the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you for the work okay. you do that impacts so many. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Definitely, I appreciate the two of you for sure. And we thank you, our audience, for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live, both for our radio audience here in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM and our online audience around the world. We appreciate you all stopping by. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. Now let's go make today amazing. Take care.